How's it going everyone? Paul with Adapt and Build Survival and what I wanted to do in this episode of Knots for the Outdoors is go through making a rapid ridge line. <laughs> Our first step in creating our ridge rapid ridge line is going to be setting up and getting our ridge line to begin with. So, as you can see here, I just have a random amount of cordage. So, all I did was put a bowline on one end. And if you go back to the first video in the series, I go through how to tie the bowline. But to measure this out, you're going to want to use your wingspan. Me being 5'9, I know my wingspan is about six foot. So I just come out here, one, I got about six foot. And I continue that process on for however long of a ridge line I wanna go with, a 30, 40, 50, however long you wanna go with, you just count off with your wingspan. So I didn't really count off the length on this one. I just cut off a piece of cordage that I knew was gonna be long enough for me to teach you guys the rapid ridge line. So let's dive into how to actually set up that ridge line now that we have our cordage for a ridge line. So using that end with the bowline, we're just gonna come around the back side of the tree and make a marlin spike. Take a stick, tent stick, whatever you wanna use. And we're just gonna lock that down on the tree. So now what that allows us to do is if we need to get out of here in a hurry, we can simply come up to this end, pull this out, boom pack our ridge line away our shelter and get out of the situation that we are in or if we're trying to break down camp so come back all we're doing with that bow line is bringing it around taking this bit of cordage pushing that through take your tent stake or spot or stick lock that down into the tree let's hop onto the other side for the modified trucker pitch so now that we're on this end, we're just gonna take a working end, bring it around the back side of the tree. And then on this side, we're gonna come out about a foot. And we're gonna give ourselves some slack here. We're gonna create a loop, drop it on itself towards the tree, pull a slip loop in there. So what the advantage of doing it this way is now we need to break down quickly, we can simply come here, pull that loose. Let me get a loop back in here. Run that working end back behind the tree. Now we're gonna take our working end, come through this loop here. Now we can start cranking down on the ridge line making that as tight as we want to. Now the further out that loop is, the tighter you're gonna be able to crank this ridge line down. For our purposes, I just wanna show you how to do all this. So next we're gonna come into this little nook here. If you look at it, if your hand's coming this way, your thumb basically slides right in place there. I'm just gonna pinch that together. Now, if you see how I'm doing this, just putting a loop over and what I'm going to do is reach through and grab that working end and we're pulling that away from the tree and we'll get something that looks like this so the same principle throughout this entire ridge line is we want to be able to break it down quickly so with this loop here all I gotta do is pull that loose, and now I can continue breaking down the ridge line. Let me tighten this back up. And now the advantage of having this loop here is we can use this as an anchor point for our emergency shelter setups, which I will do another video on. This one is just focused on making the ridge line. So something else I want to mention about this end where we tighten down our ridge line. 
Now, if you don't have the strength to be able to pinch that down and then work all of this, what you can alternatively do is we have it cranked down. Now we're gonna take our working end, come through this loop once again. You can crank that down. Now wherever we crank that down to, it's gonna lock in on itself through tension. So if you don't have the strength to be able to pinch that together and create that loop there, you can also do this. The downside is you don't get that anchor point for your merged shelters. And this one isn't quite as quick to release as the other one, but it's another option that you can add into your toolbox. All right, so now that we have our ridge line set up, we're gonna need to make our prusik loops so we can attach a tarp to the ridge line. So I cut two pieces of paracord here about the same length. You wanna make sure when you cut the cordage for your prusik loops that they're the same length. For me, I find about 10 to 12 inches is kind of that sweet spot where my loops are long enough when I pull them tight with my tarp that my tarp sits flush with my ridge line. The longer those loops are, the more of a gap you're gonna get between the, the top of the tarp and where the ridge line sit in, in the lean-to configuration. So let's dive into doing a fisherman's knot to get those prusik loops started. All right, so hopefully this white background will give a little bit more contrast with the yellow cordage. So I purposely cut these loops pretty longer than I really need just for demonstration purposes for tying those prusik loops onto the ridge line. But like I said, you wanna go for about 10 to 12 inches. For me, it's been the sweet spot. So what, to tie, our fisherman's not here. All we're gonna do is lay the ends of the paracord or cordage, whatever you're using, on top of each other and using an overhand knot. Just come up through, making that pretzel, tie that down tight. We have one side of that fisherman's knot tied. Now how I like to do this is I actually will take that loop and turn it around and just repeat the same step. So now when I pull these together, they marry up and look just like this. So you can kind of see, got some X's on the back side, and then it's kind of barreling up on the other side here. And that will be our Prusik loop. Now let's get this onto the ridge line itself. All right, so taking our loop, you want to try and keep this knot somewhere on the sides. You don't want it at the bottom or at the top because it's just going to get in the way. But you can do this two ways. You can either set it up top like this or you can come down from the bottom like this. But all we're doing is taking that, passing it through. Make sure that these lines don't cross over and we're just looping it over like this. So we got one. As you see, I'm constantly pushing that over so that the lines aren't crossing over each other. Keep it nice and uniform. Reach through one more time. And now you can push those all together. Keep it nice and tight. So now if you look at how that prusik loop is sitting on there. You're gonna have six barrels going across here. And now I have that knot off to the side. So when I put this through the ground on my tarp, it doesn't get caught up in there. And just like that, we have one prusik loop on our ridge line. Let me get the second one on here and then we'll string up a tarp. All right, so now we have two toggles on our ridge line. We can space those out so that we can set up our tarp so let me pull this in a little bit closer so you can see how i'm putting this tarp on the ridge line. all right so with our first prusik we're just going to take that end take our grommet push that through and i made a little toggle so all we're going to do is pull that down tight get this toggled center now remember when i said 
the length of those loops are going to dictate how much space you have here. So when I start pulling this tight, and I'll show you once I do, but if these are really long, you'll get a gap, something along the lines of like this. Let me get that other side strung up. So now, as you can see, because these loops are a little bit longer, when I start pulling these out, it creates this gap here. Not a huge deal if you're not expecting rain or anything like that, but just something to be aware of. That's why I tend to like to make these loops a little bit smaller. So even when I pull these tight, they st this tarp stays pretty flush to the ridge line itself. All right, so now we got our ridge line broken down. How do we store this? Well, first what we're gonna to wanna to do is take our Prusix, push them to the end with the bowline. And what we're gonna do is create a figure eight through our hand. So how you start that off, you just put it up here. And then, let me try to get this in the camera here. So push them up to the end, set those right in there. Maybe you can leave a little bit longer. And then all you're gonna do Start figuring it around your pinky and your thumb. And with this cord being bigger, I'm not going to be able to do this for too long. So you'll keep continuing that process until you have a good amount of tail left. And what I like to do at that point is come in here and at the top. I wrap that around. And where I wrapped it around, I start wrapping just below that. Now you get to the end and come through, make a clove hitch. That will be in another video of the Knots for the Outdoor series. So don't worry too much about that. But all you're doing with that is you loop it over, create an X, go right through the middle of the X. And just like that, we have our ridge line packed up and ready to be stowed in our pack. Now the benefit of the rapid ridge line is now anytime that from this configuration when we want to set up that ridge line, all we got to do is pull on this end and that'll all start unraveling and then we can just pull it, loop it around, tie it up and be good to go. So I hope you all enjoyed this video a um, few more different knots to add into the series as the series continues further i'm going to be interested in seeing different knots referring back to knots from previous videos as we're going through and doing different things so i will throw this into a playlist so you can watch them all in chronological order once there are more in the series as always leave me some comments down below i always love the interaction with all of you it's nice to kind of see who's watching, where they're from, what knots they like to use, just like what they like to do out in the outdoors. So in the comment section down below, let me know what your favorite thing to do outdoors is, whether that's camping, hiking, whatever that may be, throw those down in the comment section below. Look forward to seeing those. Like and subscribe, that helps the channel tremendously, brings more people into our community so we can grow our knowledge base together. As always, this has been Paul with Adapt Roll Survival. Adapt your mind, your body, and your gear.